Hi, chemistry students. This is your PowerPoint lecture on Unit 3, PowerPoint number 2, More Mole Calculations. You've been given some notes. Um, I'd like you to follow along on the notes as we, as we talk through this lecture. And then you are given a workbook where you are going to have some practice problems to try some of the things that we did in the lecture. Okay, so get your notes out and we're going to get started. In the last lecture, we talked a little bit about this unit called the mole. Okay, and so we're going to talk about what a mole is. So as you learned in the last lecture, the mole is actually just a number. It's a convenient number, like a dozen, for counting really small things. Its definition is the amount of pure substance containing the same number of chemical units as there are atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. And that number, so you should on your notes circle the word carbon. Um, it's based on carbon, um, but that number in 12 grams, and you can see this is carbon right here, in 12 grams of carbon-12 is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Now that's to three significant digits, okay? So whenever we do calculations with atoms, it's going to be to three significant digits. So what does that mean? That means that one mole is always one mole, just like one dozen is always just one dozen. It's always 12. So if I have a mole of lithium atoms, then it's going to be equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lithium. You can write that into your um, worksheet. Um, on the other hand, we can use it for counting other small particles like molecules as well. So if I had two moles of H2 molecules, all right, I'd have two moles of them. I'd have twice as many. So let me just uh, have you think about this for a second. So I've got this hydrogen molecule, right? So um, if I had two moles of this, I'd have two times 6.02. Just like if I had two dozen of this, I'd have two times 12. So when you put into your calculator, you're just going to be doing a multiplication. Okay? So let me go back to this. So if you multiply 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you get 1.20 times 10 to the 24th. And again, that's to three significant digits. Okay, we're assuming they're ask, asking for exactly two moles here. Okay, now here's the other thing. Um, not all atoms, not all molecules are the same size. So uh, for example, um, in my hand I've got a mole of aluminum atoms. It has a certain weight. It's a, about 27 grams. Okay, um, and this is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. On the other hand, I have in my hand a mole of carbon atoms right here. Okay, And again, as you know, a mole of carbon atoms weighs 12 grams. So these two things are both a mole, but they weigh different amounts. And the reason is just because the atoms of carbon and the atoms of aluminum are different. Okay. Aluminum atoms are bigger. Um, just like if you were talking about a dozen ping pong balls versus a dozen bowling balls, well, you'd still have 12 bowling balls and you'd still have 12 ping pong balls, but they would weigh different, okay? But you'd still be able to match one bowling ball to one ping pong ball, okay? So the idea is that not all atoms are the same size and mass. Um, but we want to be able to, instead of counting them, be able to weigh them. So in other words, sulfur um, is a much bigger atom than hydrogen. And so a mole of sulfur, even though it be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, atoms of sulfur will weigh a lot more than a mole of hydrogen atoms. Again, it would be the difference between, think of sulfur as the bowling ball. If I had a dozen sulfur atoms versus a dozen hydrogen atoms, and think of them as the ping pong balls, they wouldn't weigh the same, but I'd still have a dozen. A mole is still just a number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, what's cool is, um, on the periodic table, and you have a periodic table, let me just show you here. You have a periodic table in your workbook on the inside cover, okay? Handy dandy, convenient, okay? This is the SOL, so you should get that out and put it out in front of you while we do the rest of this, because you're going to need it, okay? So on the periodic table, there's this thing called the atomic mass. Um, I think on yours, it is above. But the atomic mass is the mass of a mole of atoms for that particular element 
in grams. So a mole of carbon is going to weigh 12 grams. A mole of nitrogen, on the other hand, is only going to weigh, is going to weigh, I'm sorry, more than, it's going to weigh 14 grams. A mole of lithium is going to weigh 6.941 grams. Again, and the reason why a mole, even though it's the same number of lithium versus carbon versus nitrogen atoms, um, is that lithium is just a smaller atom. So a mole of atoms of different elements have different masses, and we actually call that the molar mass. On your table, it says atomic mass. Um, it is also the mass in grams of one mole of the element. Uh, this is really convenient because if I need 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, it's a lot easier to go to my scale and weigh 12 grams than it would be for me to count that many. And I think you know from the last video, it would be impossible to physically count that many in any lifetime or even the lifetime of the Earth. So what you have to realize now is a mole of carbon is actually two things. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and it's this many grams of carbon. Okay. A mole of aluminum, on the other hand, um, is also 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum, but it has a different weight. If you look on the periodic table, it's about 27 grams. Okay, because aluminum atoms are bigger. If you look on the periodic table for gold, which has the symbol AU, gold is a massively big atom compared to carbon. So even though if I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, because they're so much bigger, I'm going to have to weigh out almost 200 grams of gold to get that same number. Okay, so back to your notes. Um, are all atoms the same size and mass? No. Okay, so they have different masses. So let's use our periodic table to look up. A mole of carbon atoms, of course, if you look on your periodic table, has a mass of um, 12.011 grams. Okay, I rounded to the hundreds place. On the other hand, if I look up copper and you find Cu on your periodic table, you'll see that a mole of copper atoms actually weighs 63.546 grams because it's just bigger. So even though we have the same number of atoms, we have a different mass. So the atomic or molar mass, and you can have this written in your notes, the atomic or molar mass of an element is the mass of one mole of atoms in grams. Masses of individual elements are found on the periodic table. Now, if you have a compound, though, you have to add up the masses of the atom that make up the molecule to find the molar mass of the compound. So, for example, if we were trying to figure out the molar mass of the compound carbon dioxide, CO2, we would have to look up we would have to add up the parts. So that's a carbon and two oxygens. So there's the molar mass of carbon. There's the molar mass of the oxygen, 12 grams plus, and again, we're rounding to the hundreds place in this circumstance, 12 grams plus two times 16, because there are two oxygens, equals 44.01 grams. So one mole of carbon dioxide molecules, that would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, has a mass of 44.01 grams. And again, we often work with compounds, not just individual elements or atoms. So if, and again, a mole is very convenient. Molecules are also very small. So if you try this one that's on your paper, you can pause the video if you like, and you can fill in the element, the number of atoms in the compound, the atomic mass, and then you're going to multiply and then add together to get the total mass. So this one's pretty easy because there's only one sodium and one chlorine. And so uh, the molar mass of the sodium, and again, if you don't do any rounding here, is 22.9898. And the molar mass of the chlorine is 35.4527. You add them together. Then if I have a mole of NaCl formula units, that's just uh, an, another name for molecule. We use formula unit when we're talking about ionic compounds. So the molar mass of a molecule or formula unit of sodium chloride salt is 58.44 grams per mole. And again, the idea is that then I could weigh out the salt as opposed to trying to count the formula units, which would be absolutely impossible. I also want you to note that it's important that you go out at least two decimal places when you do these things, because this is almost half a gram. If I wanted to weigh out, say, 10 moles um, of uh, sodium chloride. Um, if I had rounded just to 58, I would be about four grams short. So you do want to take this out to um, at least two decimal places. So let's look at H2O. Now this time we do have two hydrogens, so you're going to have to multiply by two. So try adding this up and which one of these would you get? Again, you can pause the tape if you want to take a little time to do this. So which one would you get? 
Okay, you get 18, right? Very close to 18 grams. Those of you who got 17, you forgot that there are two hydrogens, just not one. So in other words, we have to, if we're going to figure out the molar mass of this thing right here, we have to do the oxygen, which is about 16, and both hydrogens, which are just a little over one, and that gives us 18.0153, okay? All right, so a mole is actually three things. These are going to be our conversion factors. We learn that it's a number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that could be particles and atoms, molecules, or formula units. It's always that, just like um, a dozen is always 12. It's also a weight or a mass. And where do you find that weight? On the periodic table for the specific element. The other thing I need to talk to you about is a mole for a gas, and this is for a gas only, at something called standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters. Okay, so you need to write down, I don't think it's on your notes, but you'll see at the bottom there's some notes that say dimensional analysis. A mole is three things. And it says a mole of gas at STP is 22.4. Well, what is STP? Please write down standard temperature and pressure. And standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is one atmosphere. Remember, gases are affected by temperature and pressure. So if we're going to talk about a specific volume or space, we have to talk about the temperature and pressure. So for example, here are three gases, neon, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. If we are holding them in a balloon at zero degrees Celsius, 273 Kelvin, and one atmosphere, so a really cold day, one atmosphere is about where we are at sea level, then they're all going to have a volume of 22.4. Okay, You'll see their masses are different, though, because they are different size atoms. But they are so, gases are so diffuse, they're so spread out, that it, their size doesn't really make a difference in terms of the volume. This is mostly just empty space with the atoms and molecules widely spaced. So again, a mole is three things. Look at your dimensional analysis units. It's either 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, or it's an atomic mass, and again, that would be in grams, or it's a volume, 22.4 liters. So we've got it being three things. Here's your mole relationship. It can either be 22.4 liters if it's gas, it can be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd if it's an atom or molecule, it can be a gram amount if we're talking about weighing it. All right, so this is something called the mole road. If you look on the back, you have it a little more clearly shown. But the idea is we can use conversion factors, and you just need to decide which conversion factor mat matches the units. If you're trying to convert from moles to particles, you're going to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If you're trying to convert from moles to liters, you're going to use 22.4. If you're trying to convert from, say, grams to moles, you're going to use the molar mass from the periodic table. All right, so let's just try a couple. Um, so first of all, how many grams of lithium are in 3.5 moles of lithium? So you should copy this down as example one. This works like any other dimensional analysis problem. We start with the number, 3.50 moles of lithium. We end with grams of lithium, right? So what, what unit do we need to use? Well, we've got moles and grams. That is the uh, idea of the molar mass. So we know that one mole of lithium is 6.94. So we arrange this in our conversion factor this way so we can cancel moles. And we know that 3.5 times 6.94 gives us 24.3 grams. Again, we go to three significant digits there. All right, let's look at example two. If you turn over your page. How about going the opposite direction? How many moles of lithium are in 18.2 grams of lithium? Again, you should be copying this. 18.2 grams you start with from the problem, and we're trying to get to moles this time. This time we'll, do, we'll flip the conversion factor. Again, we need to use one mole equals 6.94 grams of lithium, and it's just going to be a division. Now, people seem to want to throw in 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd at any opportunity, but I want to just make sure you realize Nowhere in this problem does it say the word atoms. We are only going to be using atoms if in the problem they ask for moles and atoms. This asks for moles and grams. So you'll notice it doesn't go anywhere near uh, moles and atoms. So we don't use that unless it's asking for moles and atoms. Okay, let's look at um, this idea of standard volume. So again, 
Avogadro's number, but this is why Avogadro's number is named after him. He said equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. So it's been experimentally determined, and we're actually going to do a lab where we do this um, uh, at the end of the year. Um, one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure, which is 273 Kelvin and 1 ATM, occupies 22.4 liters um, of volume. Okay, so let's look at this next problem. It says, how many moles of hydrogen are in 100 liters of hydrogen? Okay, this time you notice we have the units liters and moles. So we start with liters and we're going to moles. So we have to use the conversion unit. One mole is 22.4 liters. Okay, this is example number three. And you can see it's just a division. Again, we're going to go to three significant digits, 4.46 moles. All right, let's look at one that's slightly harder. This one involves two steps. It says, how many atoms of lithium are in 18.2 grams of lithium? So we see the word grams, and we see the word atoms. And if we go back to our mole road here, OK, so we're trying to go from grams to atoms. And so look at the path you have to go through. First, you're going to need to convert to moles using the molar mass. Once you get to moles, you're going to have to convert to atoms using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We're not going to need to use liters at all because it's not in the problem. It doesn't ask us. It asks us for grams and particles. So these are the two conversion factors we will use. So we start with 18.2 grams, same thing, and we're going to atoms. We're in a spacer, so going to atoms. And so we use the conversion factor of 18.2 grams is one mole over 6.94 grams of lithium. And we got, again, that number from the periodic table. You can see that if we stopped right there, we'd be getting moles of lithium. But we want to get atoms of lithium. So we now are going to use 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lithium per mole. OK, then we just have to do the 18 divided by this equals times this equals. And you get 1.58 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Do try that in your calculator so you're sure uh, that you have it. All right, so let me come back here for a second. So um, you have gone through these problems. This is just practice. That's really the whole unit, learning how to use these three conversion units. So you should get your workbook out and start working on the homework problems. And again, the idea is, with your notes, Think about this mole road, okay? The idea that you have three choices of conversion factors, and hopefully it's just a one step, and you just have to pick one of them. And how do you know which one? You look at the units that are in the problem. On the other hand, if they have two of the units, two of the three, grams, liters, or particles, you might have to travel a little bit, but you always have to travel through moles. So good luck, and that is your lecture.